Father, we thank you for Christ. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb. Thank you for the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because you are mighty. Thank you because you are strong and great and powerful within us. This day, Lord, we pray, mountains before your people will roll away in Jesus' name. I will stand on the ground of faith. And as we stand on that ground of faith, Lord, we pray nothing will be able to stand before us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word in every life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. You can see that we're reading from Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, looking at verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Why did he say something to them? Because they asked a question. And Jesus said unto them, What was the situation? They had actually experienced failure. And they were surprised when that same problem that same difficulty or challenge was brought to the Lord Jesus Christ at the snap of a finger, of the fingers. The problem was solved. It surprised them. That's why they asked the question in verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, why could not we cast him out? That question, why? In your life, you must have had chance to have asked, why? Why? This situation in my life, why? The disciples prayed, but there was no answer. Why? The believers and the disciples of today, you have prayed as well. Confronting this mountain in the family. Confronting this difficulty on your job. Confronting this situation in your relationship. And you wished things were better. And things were not better. And then you began to ask the question in your mind. Why? That's exactly the same situation that the disciples found themselves. Why couldn't we? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I've read that many times, and you have heard that many times. I need to tell you something now. There are mountains that are removed by faith. There are mountains that are removed by love. There are some mountains that will never move away without love. Love is stronger than force. There are some mountains force will never remove. And the world has tasted that. There is a war going on now, you know. In that part of the world, where the greatest power on earth, the greatest force on earth, is confronting that mountain with force. There are losses on both sides whenever there is force. And yet, the mountain we want to remove never gets away by force. 
It, got, it goes deeper and higher and broader and greater force deepens our problem. There are mountains that will never go away by force. Faith is greater. Faith is higher. Faith is mightier than force. And now abides faith, hope, love. And the greatest of them is love. There are some mountains you don't even have to talk to them when there is love. And the mountains just vanish away when there is love. But now we're concealing the power of faith that moves mountains. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily, certainly, assuredly, I say unto you, that ye, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I pray that day will come in your life when nothing will be impossible unto you. In Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 11, Verse 22, and Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. Those four words, have faith in God. Have the God kind of faith. Have faith in God. Because that is the solution to a lot of problems. That whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever. Of course, you know, sometimes when you read whosoever in the Bible, whosoever is broad and it covers the whole world. But there are other times you read whosoever in the Bible. And your server is a little bit restricted and limited. You have never had that, have you? That you, when you read whosoever, that like whosoever believeth on him will not perish but have everlasting life. That whosoever is very wide and very broad, covering the whole world. But this whosoever, whosoever shall say, this whosoever is a little bit restricted and limited. Let me show you. Verse 25. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, here we are. The restriction of the whosoever. If you do not forgive, Neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. You see, verse 26, help us to understand verse 23. That if we're carrying around bitterness and hatred and malice and animosity and mitty in our hearts, we are disqualified from the whosoever of verse 23. The whosoever there then is limited by verse 25 and verse 26 whosoever actually that brings us again to that love look at galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verse 6 for in jesus christ Neither circumcision availeth anything, nor circumcision, but faith which walketh by love. Faith which walketh by love. Faith 
minus love is weak. Faith minus a peaceful relationship with your neighbor is weak. Faith and fasting and prayer minus love is important. Faith which worketh by love. That's why Jesus, you have to understand the words of Jesus. That's why he said, when you stand, pray. Yes, you need faith, but you need love. Consideration for your fellow brother, for your fellow sister, for your neighbor. So that your faith will not have anything to limit it, to restrict it, to destroy it. We're back to Mark chapter 11, verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, Believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. The power of faith that moves mountains. Three points. Number one, recognizing mountains of difficulties in the family. Recognizing mountains of difficulties in the family. Number two, rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness, rejecting mountains of discouragement through faithfulness. Number three, rejecting mountains of death by faith. Number one, recognizing mountains of difficulty in the family. Matthew chapter 17 again, we're looking at verse 14. The problem here that made Jesus to pronounce what he said was actually difficulty in the family. Help, there was a family. And they had just this only son. And they had a problem in that family, a difficulty in that family, a challenge in that family that weighed them down, that oppressed the mind of the father, the mother, of everybody in the family difficulty in the family is there a difficulty in your family that's the, that's the mountain jesus was talking about is there a problem in your family that's the mountain jesus was talking about is there a challenge and insurmountable obstacle in your family that's the mountain jesus was talking about look inward and look around and look at daddy and mommy and every one of the children. Is there something that bothers you in that family? That's the difficulty. That's the mountain. It says in Matthew chapter 17 verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him say, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is lunatic. For he is mad. There are some people that are referred to as mad, or as imaginary, as just the insinuation of people saying you are mad. They say some people have partial madness. Maybe that is true. Maybe it's just insinuation. But this one is for real. He was a lunatic. The father said so, and so vexed. For all times he falleth into the fire, and up into the water. Truly, really, this one falling into the water, falling into the fire, hurting himself. He couldn't be doing that deliberately. He was mad. The only child in the family, the only son in the family, mad. That's the difficulty. That's a mountain of difficulty in the family. 
and it says, and I brought him to thy disciples, and he could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? How long shall I endure your little faith, your unbelief? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil. The devil is rebuked in your family. The demon is rebuked in your family. And in all your circumstances, the devil is rebuked in Jesus' name. And it departed out of him. The word came out of Jesus. And the moment the word came out of Jesus, that devil, that demon came out of that child. No matter how long your difficulty, your challenge has been, I declare you free in the name of Jesus. And the child was cured from that very hour. Look at your time. This very hour, the Lord has set you free. Free in your soul and free in your spirit and free in your family. All those mountains, they are gone in Jesus' name. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. Privately. And he said, we must understand this. Well, once you know the reason for this, why could not we, we in the plural, Jesus had gone to the mountain top, the Mount of Transfiguration with James, John, and Peter, and the nine of them remained. And it says, maybe I should say eight of them, because you know, Jesus 